Yo, what's up? It's me, Alex, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how electrical engineering looks like at a UK university. I'm making this video because I tend to see on YouTube loads of videos about this, but more specifically towards US um, universities, and there is a difference. So I'm going to explain it to you guys. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk about content. In terms of what you're going to learn, you're going to have a lot of maths and you're going to have a lot of programming. In terms of the maths, linear algebra, calculus, complex numbers, that's the main thing. Statistics as well, but statistics is shit, so we don't talk about it. <laughs> complex numbers are so essential that when you go, you will see. In terms of the programming, you can't run away from programming in electrical engineering. It's how the world runs. Your modules will in some way encapsulate programming. They will find a way to give you a coursework. I'll talk about coursework later. And you also have some type of modules about the physical theories like electromagnetism, Faraday's law, Lenz's law, all of that stuff. You have to know how to do that because you need to understand what's going on on the molecular, on the atomic, on the subatomic level. You know what I'm saying? There is a lot of coursework in a, a lot, not like a vocational subject, for example, but there's a substantial amount of coursework. In most modules, it's around 30-40%. Unless it's a programming module where it's around 50-50, uh, theory and coursework, but it's around, let's, let's average up to around 35-40% in, in each module. And it's usually programming. In it, even if it's not a programming module, it's most likely going to be programming. It's pretty long. It's really hard and it's really time consuming. However, the pass mark for a module is around 40%. If you do your coursework perfectly, you can basically pass your module by Christmas. Oh, there's also labs. They're very cool. However, they're time consuming as hell because they're really hard and they're usually worth something for your module. Therefore, you have to go to your labs. Unlike lectures, you cannot times two speed your lab two weeks later. You're just going to miss it and you probably won't be able to do some of the coursework. So keep that in mind. However, you get to feel how it is to be an electrical engineer. In terms of how a lab looks like, it can be something like soldering a capacitor to a circuit board to sit in a computer lab and programming or literally just playing around with oscilloscopes and multimeters and finding voltages and currents. That's usually how it is. Next thing, your schedule, your timetable. It is twice as intense as the average university student. So be prepared. It is a bit of a sacrifice. However, you get to make more money later. So, but nevertheless, one more thing is unlike US universities, in the UK, when you do electrical engineering, it's going to be extremely specified. And it's because the course is accredited by an organization called IET, and they have these regulations and you basically can't really go past them. So I know in the US you can major in something, minor in something, you can pick some other classes. You don't really get the chance to do anything else, which is a bit of a shame. Like I really like physics and philosophy, for example. I would love to pick up a philosophy class. However, you could just buy a book, so it's not that deep. You have probably never encountered engineering in your life up until university. I never did. I did maths, physics, and computer science at, U, uh, at A level, and I thought I had a fairly good grasp of what engineering is. Let me not lie to you guys, it's not completely different, but I understand why it is its own field. And for example, you learn the pure maths that you need, and straight away it's sent to a real life application slash circuit. And like in A level maths, you just never, never even touch the, the applied factor that you get in a in a maths module here at university when you're doing um, an engineering degree. In terms of the physics, it's really straight to the point. Physicists are really fancy. They like to explain things in a very fancy way. Here in engineering, and especially in electrical engineering, they just teach you the stuff you need to know and they literally cut every single thing out. Same with maths, to be honest, but with physics, it's even it's even more cut out and straight to the point because in physics, there's so much of it and it's so complicated. So keep that in mind. It is a bit of a shame, for example, like me who really likes physics. However, it's not the end of the world. You still get to touch it. It's just not on the same theoretical level. 
that's it. If you want any other information, details, hit um, a comment down in the description. I will definitely read it. If you guys enjoyed the video, I would appreciate if you guys could hit the like and follow in a bit.